In Rifley Water, a bushy fly such as this Adams or these wolf flies is a good choice. But trout also feed on subaquatic organisms during these non-hatch periods. In fact, as much as 90% of the trout's diet consists of subsurface forms. You might select an imitation of a mayfly nymph or other aquatic insect and fish at dead drift with the upstream approach like I showed you earlier. Or you might select an imitation of a critter such as a scud. It's the most important of the freshwater crustaceans and occurs in trout waters everywhere. Imitations of these swimming organisms should be fished with an active retrieve. To fish these particular imitations, we want the fly to move. So we're going to take advantage of the fact that water moves, and we're going to adapt our techniques to allow the moving water to move the fly. One way to do this is simply to cast across stream and allow the pressure of the current to swing the fly back to you. This is called the down and across approach. Just cast across like that and let the pressure of the current swing the fly back. And I just jiggle the rod tip a little bit, maybe to give it some action. I'm casting across a current tongue here because fish, if they're in feeding positions, will be on either side of this current tongue and I can swing the fly right across them, just like that. Now, when you're using this technique, the fly obviously rides just under the surface. It doesn't get down too deep. I might also want to use a technique where I can get the fly very deep and then make it swim up like it might be a a caddis pupa, for example, ascending to the surface. Well, the lising ring lift is a very good technique to do that. For this technique, you cast upstream and allow the fly to sink as it comes down. Well, as the fly comes down, you have to lift the rod tip, otherwise you'll get a belly on the line, which would pull the fly to the surface. If the fly passes your position, lower the rod tip, and then hold it when it gets to the down to cross position, and allow the fly to swing across to your side. This lifting lifts up the belly of the line so we don't get any drag and allows the, fl the fly a time to sink. Then we lower it, the fly is still sinking. Now the fly is as deep as it's gonna get. When I stop the rod, the fly swings across and comes up to the surface. In wind like this, you have to cast a little bit harder than you normally would and you might wanna shorten your leader down to oh, eight feet or so to help you get that line out there. Just cast up and across, lift as the line comes down and lower the rod tip as the line passes your position. Even when it isn't the best of weather, with these techniques, you can still take fish. Doesn't want to just come in and be netted. That's a nice trout. This lising ring lift and down and across approach for active flies will work on any stream, even big rivers. This is a freestone stream. That is, it has a rocky bottom, a riffle pool configuration, and as you can see, obviously fast currents. These kind of rivers are found all over the country. The tactics that I showed you for the Spring Creek will work here when the fish are feeding under similar circumstances. Now, in addition to having good populations of mayflies and midges, these kind of streams also have very good populations of caddisflies. The life cycle of the caddis is like that of the midges. The larva is a worm-like creature that often builds a case of gravel or sticks in which to live. Rough dubbed patterns such as this are good choices to match the cased larva and can be fished successfully with the upstream shotgun tactic. The larva takes about a year to mature, then it seals itself inside the case and metamorphoses to the pupa. The pupa requires another, well, about two weeks to mature. When the pupa's mature, it cuts its way out of the case, drifts along the bottom for a while, and then ascends rather rapidly to the surface. Once it gets to the surface film, the adult breaks out of the pupal husk quite quickly and flies off. Trout grab and bite at the emerging insects with a splashy, showy rise that often leaves several bubbles. Sometimes a fish will jump clear out of the water in its haste to capture the escaping pupa. This soft tackle fly, tied with sparkle yarn, is an excellent choice to mimic the pupa. And the lising ring lift I showed you earlier is probably the best way to simulate its drifting and then ascending behavior. Adult caddisflies look much like small moths when you see them flying about. When resting, however, they hold their wings in a tent-like fashion over their back. 
So take these adult caddisflies, both when they're hatching and when they come back to lay eggs. Because the adults often skitter around over the surface, the trout take them with the same splashy rise as they would emerging pupa. This elk hair caddis and this humpy are very good patterns to imitate the adults on fast water. These more delicately dressed patterns are better for slow water. You can fish imitations of adult caddis flies upstream in a typical dead drift manner, but you might also want to fish them with a little bit of action to simulate the dancing adult. Probably the best way to do this is to fish across or down and across. If you're fishing across stream, uh-oh, be careful of the bushes. <laughs> now, as I was saying, <clears throat> you can fish adult caddisfly patterns upstream in a dead drift fashion like you would other dry flies, but you might also want to give them a little bit of action. The best way to do this is to fish them either across or down and across. If you're fishing across, use that reach men to get the line upstream, and then as the fly goes down, just give it a few little twitches to dance it on the surface like that. But the best way, really, is to fish down and across with it. Cast down, use the parachute men, drop the fly on the surface. As it runs down, just stop the rod tip, and that'll dance the fly right up on the surface and look just like an egg-laying or hatching adult. Trout usually take this dancing imitation with a rather violent rise, so you gotta be ready. While caddis flies are very important on freestone streams, in heavy flows like this, there are also good populations of stone flies. These insects, like the mayflies, have only a nymphal and adult stage. The nymph can be recognized by the presence of two pair of wing pads and the lack of gills along the sides of the abdomen. They vary in size from about a half an inch to as much as two inches and live from one to three years. At maturity, the nymph crawls from the water before the adult emerges. Thus, there is no need for an emerging stonefly artificial. However, trout take the nymphs readily, and since the insects are poor swimmers, a nymph pattern such as this should be fished dead drift along the bottom. If you're fishing stonefly nymphs dead drift in shallow water, such as you might do if the nymphs are migrating into shore, you can simply use the shotgun approach that I showed you earlier with the strike indicator. But if you're gonna fish out in this deep, heavy water like that, you got to remember that the prime lies are on the bottom. The fish won't come up through a lot of water to take the fly, so you have to get the fly right down on the bottom. A floating line is not very effective for doing that, even if the nymph is heavily weighted. So in this case, I might use a wet tip line. The forward 10 feet of this line is actually a sinking line. It's darker in color, as you can see. And the rest of the line, the lighter colored portion here, is a floating line. The advantage of using a line like this is, while this part sinks to get the fly down, the rest is floating and you can control it and handle it very easily. And the best technique for fishing these nymphs dead drift with the wet tip line is a lising ring lift. Suppose that I wanted to fish that slick in behind that rock there, remembering that the fish could be at the sides of the current. So I just cast up and across like that, just like we're going to do the old lising ring lift, and let her come right down. Now, it's a good idea anytime you're doing the lising ring lift to watch the line. If it should jump upstream suddenly, maybe a fish has your fly. Cast it right up there. Let it sink and come down. The fly is going right down on the bottom now. Now it's bouncing along. I can feel it hit a rock occasionally. And when it gets right to this point, it'll start to swing across in the currents. And that's usually a very good time for the fish to take the fly. You'll feel them grab it. And they usually grab it quite hard in this fast water. So be ready. If your line should get downstream from it, you can just mend that floating portion very nicely like that. Get a little longer float. Hey! That old stonefly nymph on that wet tip line did the job. Oh, it's not a big fish, but boy, it fights strong in that current. <laughs> 